How are you doing everybody, Jonathan here, and in this video, along with my buddies Danny from Canada and AxFit and Jono from Fitness Education Online in Australia, we're gonna go over how to unlock the power of Instagram. And yes, it is true that you can use this social media app to grow and cultivate your business. However, a lot of trainers don't use it to its fullest potential. So we put our heads together and we got to talking about different strategies that you can use to get more clients, to keep more clients, to grow your fitness business using Instagram. And it was very productive. I know it's gonna be very helpful for you. So sit back. Um, first, grab a notepad because you're gonna to wanna to take some notes. This is a video that you're gonna to wanna to watch multiple times over, but I guarantee you it's gonna be very helpful. So with no further delay, let's Get into it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Boot Camp Blueprint, the place where personal trainers go to grow their boot camp. I'm super excited because I've got my two boot camp experts with me this week. Who have we got? How are we doing, everybody? Jonathan Hurdleist. I go by Jonathan Fit Pro. I'm just a guy that loves fitness. I love business. And you can find me on Instagram by searching how to sell personal training. Or you can find me on Facebook um, by searching um, BFF Bootcamp, and I'm happy to have everybody. And I'm Danielle from AxFit. You can find me online anywhere um, under AxFit. And yeah, I love talking with these guys. And um, every topic, we I feel like I'm excited about every topic. So this definitely isn't getting old. Awesome. And I'm Jono. I'm your host from Fitness Education Online. Very interesting topic this week, Instagram. It's one of those things like half the world is probably on it. So if we can capitalize on this as personal trainers, it's a huge opportunity. And what I've noticed speaking to a lot of trainers around the place is sometimes they struggle with Instagram because as trainers, eh, we're not always the most technological savvy people, right? We get into fitness because we almost tell people to get off their phones and off social media and off technology. So a lot of the time it can be hard, especially with Instagram, because in my experience on Facebook, people are okay. Anyone over the age of about, you know, 30 is okay with Facebook, but Instagram is a lot more prevalent with that younger crowd. So if we want to move forward, and what I'm finding with Instagram anyway, not only are more younger people getting on it, but as it goes on, more older people are getting on it as well. So if we can capitalize, it's a huge opportunity. Let's start with uh, Jonathan Hurdleus. What can you tell us about Instagram? Any tips or, or strategies? Yeah, um, I guess the best thing that I could say is that you have a paradigm understanding that Instagram is a tool for business, all right? And the goal in all areas of fitness and business is to work smarter, not harder. So I see a lot of trainers and then they're taking videos every day and they're like, man, I post all the time and I don't get anybody to sign up for my boot camp, but they're not doing the things. They're not, they're not leveraging Instagram the way that they should. So they're putting up hashtag boot camp, hashtag workout. That's great. But that's going out to everybody that's not targeted. So your goal is to get people from your local area to, um, to get involved with your boot camp or your personal training. Um, and um, you also have to consider whether or not you're using Instagram for retention or for acquisition. And if you're using it for retention, sure, just take videos of your class all the time so that people can go to your page, like it, and feel good about what they're doing. But if you're looking for acquisition, that isn't necessarily going to be enough. So like if I record my client, Nicole, she will see herself and then she will like it or she will comment and then the reach ends there. However, if I can get her to post her video on her Instagram, then the reach goes further and then all of her friends are gonna see what she's doing and then, she can, and then they can ask her about it. So there are a number of strategies that you can implement in order to be more successful. One thing, a contest. And I'm big on spending money to get people to outreach. And so you can do something as simple as, hey everybody, um, we're gonna do a contest. You have a week to take as many videos or pictures of yourself or the boot camp over the course of the week. And then whomever gets the most likes on a single video or a picture will get a free month of boot camp. 
All right, so everybody's gonna be taking pictures. They're gonna try to get the best shot. They're gonna try to take a great picture of themselves and they're gonna try to get those likes and they're gonna ask their friends, hey, please like this video because that's gonna get me a free month of bootcamp. And then their friends will be able to say, whoa, look at this awesome stuff that you're doing at this bootcamp. I wanna become a part of this. So that's a way to leverage it because you wanna get other people to get their circle involved with your bootcamp. Also, um, I think a lot of times people leave their Instagram page as a personal page. Um, you can use it as a business page and that will allow you to boost posts, which will go beyond your reach. So the people that are following you right now already know about you. What you want to do is you want to reach the people that don't know you. So if you're not going to take the route of making a contest, you have to be good with pulling $5 out of your pocket and saying, all right, Instagram, I want to boost this to all the women in Nutley, New Jersey, between the ages of 22 and 55. And I'm going to say in this post, hey, everybody, you can attend my boot camp for a week for free or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm more on the Facebook end. And since Facebook bought Instagram, whenever you run a Facebook ad, you can also run it onto Instagram. But you have to be open to using it to, um, to outreach. So if you're not gonna go the organic route, you gotta pay for it. And it's worth it, it'll come back around. And the best thing about Instagram is that it doesn't cost that much. Uh, with Facebook, you have to spend a minimum of $5 a day. Whereas with Instagram, I believe you can spend whatever you want. It's like boosting a page on your Facebook. You can, like, you can spend like $5 over the course of three days. It's really reasonable. So um, that's just from the strategic end. Um, I love Danny's Instagram page because she has a lot of great content. So I'm interested to see how you can better put together content. But if you're not sending it out, if you're only just posting it on your page and then doing like hashtag fitness, yeah, somebody in California is going to see it, but they're not going to fly to New Jersey to come to my 5.30 a.m. class. So you have to... You have to use strategies to get local and then you'll see more success. Awesome. Love that. I love all those points there. I'll, I'll piggyback off some of them a bit later on, but let's move on to Danielle there because Danielle, I agree with Jonathan. Her Instagram is just so engaging, right? Whatever she posts there, it looks awesome. She gets all these likes and comments. So Danielle, how do you do it? Um, first of all, why don't you call me Danny anymore? <laughs> because you called me out on it once. If you're, if you're listening to this, like, um, I think Jonathan asked her, he was like, so I've got to ask Danny, do you prefer Danny or Danielle? She's like, well, that was the first question I asked. Exactly. And she's like, well, to be honest, John, was the only one that calls me Danny. And I'm like, Oh no, I'm so embarrassed. I've been the only one calling her. So I've strategically been taking it out and, and trying to replace it with Danielle. <laughs> Oh, because I always wanted people to call me Danny. So when we first met, I said that to you, thinking it would catch with people in the world. And now it's like, now people are just confused. <laughs> oh, good. Well, hey, if you're listening to this podcast, AxFit is known as Danny from now on. I won't use Danielle again. Okay, I like Danny. All right. Anyways. Okay, so yeah, Instagram. I love Instagram. And I'm... It's funny because I'm a Gemini, so I have like two personalities and I have like one on this shoulder and one on this shoulder and one loves social media and loves it. And the other one are, and it's always like, oh, post about this, post about this. And then the other side of me, my other personality wants to like quit, get rid of my phone, never post, never have like Facebook, Instagram, any of that. Cause I'm kind of got a hippie in me who's like, I don't need that stuff. I got to just be a tree hugger and stop, you know, with the electronics. So it's definitely, I have my days where I'm like, you know, I need that digital detox. And I think just taking the odd day is important, but, um, I am a huge Instagram. I love it. I don't have billions of followers, but I have true followers. So, you know, I, I, I get in people that are engaged and they do comment a lot. You can have, you know, like a hundred K followers. Sometimes people have fake followers too. And I say like, never do the fake follower row because people can tell, cause it's like you have 500 K, but you have like, 40 likes on a picture like people can tell and then it just seems very like you seem like kind of needy and like just fake so then who wants to follow someone that's doing that I always unfollow people that have those fake followers I don't know about you guys but then um so definitely you want to 
just build organically your own following and then not worry so much about how many you have. I don't think that's you, but you want to have true followers that really like what you're posting. Um, and I think the number one thing is mine's a business page, but my business is me and it's my brand. So I share a little bit of everything. I share a bit of family, I share a bit of food, I share a bit of me. I open up about myself. I don't always look perfect. I don't make, you know, I'm not always like beautiful makeup and people write me and say, I love that you just come on and you know, you don't look like some days you look kind of rough and like, I'm not offended by them saying that. Cause I do just go on and I'm not trying to look like this beauty every time I go on there and it's just being real and people like real. So I know when I talk to some people, they're afraid to like put their face, but you guys can correct me. Don't you love watching someone like face on Instagram in a story, just talking? I find it really cool. I love following people that actually like just talk on there. So it's hard for me to do that at first because it's nerve wracking. I get maybe about 2000 people watch every single story and that's not a ton. I mean, but for me, they're, they're my true fans and they say, you know, a thousand true fans and you can run a very successful business. So if you can build it to that, then that's good. But uh, so I think putting yourself out there is a huge thing that people just have to try and do. Get their face on there, talk, you know, open up, um, maybe practice at first, just making like little videos on your own, share them to, cause you can see who you want to send them to, just send them to mom or send them to whoever. And then once you get comfortable with it, you will just start doing it. So I think I do well that way because I just put myself out there and I say what I have to say. So, and then it comes to the grid too, the photos, you don't want to overshare. Sometimes people put too many pictures up and then people get annoyed. So it's very like, I feel like there's a science to it. Um, I try and do like one a day on the grid and then like one to five stories on the sto in the stories. Cause if you do too many, it get, people get annoyed too, right? If the stories are too long. Um, and then hashtags are important. Like Jonathan says, I try and do, I always do my um, city YQG because then people always look at YQG. So I try and do some that are for my local crew and then for worldwide. Um, and then if you don't know how to hashtag, there's a good website called daily purpose and you can go on there on your phone and then you type in a couple, a couple things about your picture. Say it's me, um, eating spaghetti under a tree. Then I would type in like spaghetti tree, um, yum, um, you know, outside. And then it gives you like 50 of the best hashtags to do with what's in your picture. So, and the, and ones that are really like, um, popular and that are like searched a lot. So I use daily purpose often. Um, what else can I say? You don't want to be too salesy. I find like if people are always posting like salesy photos about their boot camp or like everything's just a sales pitch, like that's annoying. Like people don't want to just look at a commercial every day. And some people become like an ad, like they're like, you know, these trainers get popular and all of a sudden they're doing something about shampoo. And the next day it's about like the clothes their kids are wearing. And I find that so lame. It's like, I don't want to watch this like looks like you got this perfect life at home and you're like selling me shampoo. Like I don't want to see your shampoo. So I get companies that write me and they'll be like, Hey, do you want to like, you know, post about this and that. And as much as I'd like the free freaking shampoo, I say, no, I'm sorry. Because like, I don't want to sell out and start like selling shampoo to my following because they don't really want to see that. So I never get into like salesy ads and stuff like that. And then for as far as the grid goes, you need good pictures. Like if you take a picture and you think you like it, but it's not crisp and clear and good quality, like don't post it. You're not going to get a lot of likes. People want like a crisp, good picture and you don't want to over filter it. I find over filter filtered pictures, just like it just sometimes just doesn't look right. Right. And then another big thing is, um, going and you got to spend some time liking other people's photos, commenting on their stuff, right? Cause if you're commenting, then it kind of builds your algorithm into theirs. Um, so going and liking and commenting and complimenting compliments are huge. I do it in my boot camp. I do it out in my community. I do it on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. You compliment people like crazy that builds you and your brand because people feel good around you. So definitely that's a huge thing on Instagram complimenting. And then when you post, it's good to ask questions because it gets people interacting. So on the grid, you post something and say, Hey, like, you know, da, 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 and you ask a question or tag your friend if they would love to do this, like, you know, booty workout with you. And then they start tagging each other. So, I mean, I could go on and on. There's a lot of like cool stuff about Instagram, but, um, I would definitely, and then the business side of it, like Curtis said, like sponsored ads are really awesome on Instagram because you can choose who, what, where, when, why, between what hours, like it's so awesome. You don't have to spend too much. 
Um, I've done the odds. We did the six week gym program and I did a sponsored ad and it really like really was awesome. It did really well on there. So you just kind of got to play with that. And it's kind of fun to, to watch the back end and see how it grows. But yeah, I'd say my best thing advice is to get on your Instagram, start sharing, be colorful, be bright, be positive. Don't get into politics or, you know, don't post pictures of you partying or drinking. Like you're supposed to be kind of a hero to people. So, you know, and I don't get involved in any like stuff about religion and I try and keep it very like, like safe, but positive and um, compliment people and just like have a big open heart. And that's kind of my um, success on there is just like spreading uh, positivity. Oh, I, I don't awesome. think I breathe through that. One. <laughs> All right. So I took a, a heap of notes there. I'll, I'll summarize it for the listeners. So step one was pretty much just putting yourself out there, right? Like you've got an Instagram account and if you don't post it, like there's no point. And also you don't need it to be perfect, right? Like a lot of it's, and this is what I like about, if you go on uh, Danny's Instagram at AxFit, you'll see it's just got that vibe where you can see it's her, she's energetic, she's positive. Her, the, the photos that she posts portray that image. The, the description that she writes portrays that image. The story that she shares portrays that image. The comments she puts on other people's things portrays that image. So it just feels really authentic because a lot of that other stuff you can outsource and people do, but it just loses a lot of the authenticity. Like I feel if Danny was to do that and to hire an external company and be like, yeah, hey, just post all these you know, memes and like professional model shots and just put emojis for comments on other people, it wouldn't be as successful. So that's one thing Danny's got really well there. The other thing is with the hashtags, the daily purpose, because what you can do on Instagram is you do your photo and you're like, oh, I've done my photo. Now what hashtags am I going to do? Oh, I'll just enter a few generic ones in. You post it. Then an hour later, or me anyway, I'm like, oh, I should have used this and I should have used that and I should have used that. Daily purpose will help prevent that because it'll give you those hashtags there. On the grid, so on your actual feed on Instagram, we want those photos to look really nice because Instagram is such a uh, visual platform there. So if you take a photo and it's a bit blurry or it's not as high quality, it's not going to look as good. So the things you put on your feed have to be clear. Now, can I ask you a question here, Danny? Can the story be a bit more relaxed? Say you take a photo and it's not super clear, you might not want to put it on your, your grid or your feed, but could you get away with it on the story? Um, yeah, you could put it on the story. I, um, usually if I ever have a, just a crummy quality picture, I just don't use it all. And it's, sometimes it sucks. Cause it's like, Oh, it was like such a good picture. Or I had that person jumping in the right air, but if it's blurry and their arms blurry, like I just, I just opt out and not use it. And, uh, you know, so yeah, yeah. I don't want to get blabbing too much. So yeah, no, no, I agree with that. And time on others is a big one as well, because if you're just posting on your own Instagram, that's only going to get you so far. But if you can interact on other accounts and once again, be genuine, because once again, there's apps and there's bots that can just you know, leave generic comments on everyone else's, but they're more annoying than anything. As soon as, I, as soon as I see one of those on my Instagram, I block those people. I block them and report them. But if you can get a, a genuine comment to someone else, all of a sudden, hold on, who's this AxFit person? Let me check them out. Oh, that's a pretty cool profile. I might follow them. Oh, that's a pretty cool photo there. I might like a few of their, oh, that's a cool workout. I'm going to tag my friend and it goes on from there. And the other one was the asking questions. And this is what I found in Instagram myself. You can post a photo and if you ask a question on that photo, you just get more interaction and just a super simple way to do it, right? Let's say you've got, um, you post a photo of a workout, all right? And you can post the photo of a workout. That's fine. But if you posted the photo of the workout and wrote somewhere on there, whether it's on the photo, you write tag a friend you'd like to do this with or you know, tag a friend to whatever, you're going to get more tags just by asking them, right? And even if you don't know what to do, a common one I use, I'm a big quote person. You know, If you follow me on social media, I, I do all these quotes and that. One thing I always use with quotes is just a simple comment below if you feel this. right? I find I could do that exact same quote, but if I don't ask a question, yeah, I'll get people like it. Some people may comment, but if I write, comment below if you feel this or comment below if you agree this, you'll just get so much more comments from there. And if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I comment, you know, who cares about a comment? That's true in an extent, but a comment builds on, right? Because if someone comments on your post, they're more likely to see your next post, 
right? Then your next one, then your next one. So that's where comments are important there. And also just in terms of your thing getting seen more, right? Because say, for example, if you follow a few hundred people on Instagram or a few thousand even, you might not see every single post every day because you just got too many people. Instagram's going to show you the ones that they think you'll like, which are based on what other people have liked and what you've liked previously. So it's a huge advantage to get into comment. So that's, um, that's Danny's there. Did, did you have anything to uh, ask or comment on, on Danny's there, Jonathan? Um, not really. Uh, I, I like all the information that you gave Danny. Um, and I would say that's something that a friend told me, you know, you can't be business all the time. Like I look for certain people's stories and Danny's is one of them because you have this way of talking where you kind of sing. You're like, we just did push up. Like it, it lightens up people's day. You know what I mean? And you want people to feel like they're your buddy. Like, you know, we did this pot. We've done this podcast every week, but like just reading your stories, I feel like I'm kind of your buddy, you know, like I've been to your house. I've hung out with your kids, you know, and that's <laughs> something that, you know, I don't do enough of personally because I'm such a crazy person. I, I got to focus on metrics and numbers all the time. But if any trainer can make themselves more accessible, you know, that's what leads to sales. It's not always about a hard sell. It's not always about an offer. And if you put yourself out there, you're going to be successful. Yeah, I find like um, I, I post a lot. My main reason is this. I, I have my training guides. I sell them to people all over the world. People come onto my YouTube, then they go on my website. And just like they do, I always go to people's Instagram to see, are they real? Are they authentic? Is it some weird brand somewhere in the world that I don't really know what's going on? Is this a real person? Is it fake? Like, can I trust it? So for me, my Instagram is to build me and my brand and trust. It's a trust thing. So opening myself up and showing me, then when people go to my YouTube or find me on my Instagram or my axit.com, uh, um, or like Jonathan likes to say, www.axit.com, <laughs> Then um, they go to my Instagram like everybody does and then they see, oh, it's a real person. This is just a girl and she's just talking on these stories and I see her in the videos and I see her here and she's real and I trust her and I feel like I know her. So then I find it really helps sell my training guides and my local following that follows me on Instagram. They see me so much every day in their stories. They feel like they know me when they finally feel like working out or they're ready to do it. They're thinking of me all the time anyway. So the first call I or the place they go is to me because they see me so much just right in their own home that when they think fitness, they think Axe Fit. So there's a lot of good benefits to it. Um, yeah, I, I love it. And there's a couple good tips. Maybe you can share them. You like people, when you have your bio, um, you know, if you want it to all go in that row that you see, sometimes people have, like if you go on mine, it's not like this long blurby thing about me. I have like the separate lines. You want to use your notepad. You go on your notepad or the notes app on your phone and you put like, you know, your name and then you can't leave a space. You have to hit enter and go down to the next line. And then you can put an emoji and then put something about you, another something about you. And you can't leave any spaces before you go to the next line. You got to go right to the next line. And you'll see what I mean if you do it. And then you copy that and paste that in your profile. And then it'll allow you to have a nice crisp um, bio in your profile. And same goes when you're posting on the grid on your pictures. You'll see sometimes people have like nice clean. And Jono, I know you do this too. Um, you could put dots and you could put things so that it, it's easy to read because if you want to share a paragraph and it's just like ongoing, going, going, like you see on Instagram, it's because people don't know, or they're not taking the time to go to their notes and make it in there and then copy that and paste it there. So I always do it in my notes and then bring it there. And then you get, it's easy to read. Then people want to look at your pictures cause they know, Oh, she makes it so easy to read. I'm going to like check out what she has to say. So that's another tip. I hope that made sense. Good stuff. Yeah, I, <laughs> I will. Um, I want to piggyback on what both the experts said here because they've both given really, really good info on both different sides of it. So I love a couple of things Jonathan mentioned in terms of the challenge and in terms of getting into the local market. So I'll even get a bit deeper into that. Actually, we'll go a bit deeper still. So I'm not 
very good at photos. That's one thing I've always sucked at, right? I don't take good photos of other people and also myself. I'm not the best looking guy anyway. I'm not very photogenic. If I took too many photos of myself and posted them, I'd probably lose followers, right? So I've got to be strategic. <laughs> I've got to be strategic and be like, how can I still grow my following without just posting heaps of photos of myself? And one, and this also piggybacks on Danny as well, is I love to go in and just interact with other accounts. If I'm doing it as fitness education online, it's super easy because I can just search via the bootcamp hashtag and I'm going to see a million trainers that are running bootcamp. And from there, it's very easy for me to interact with them. I can just, you know, follow them. I can like their photos. I can comment on their photos and be genuine and be like, hey, that's an awesome workout. Where is it? Or, you know, things like that there. And it's just a really easy way to open up a conversation. If you're listening to this and you don't run an online business, maybe you run a face-to-face one, you can simply do that just by either people that check in at your location or use, your, use that hashtag as a location. So let's use, for, and this goes both ways. So Danny mentioned that whenever she takes a photo, she hashtags her local city, okay? So if you're a trainer, I recommend doing that. That's the, the best thing to do. And if you're listening in Australia, we go via suburbs, right? Do your local suburb, but also do like three or four surrounding suburbs. Like I live here in Brighton, Los Angeles. I don't just want to hashtag Brighton, Los Angeles. I also want to hashtag Cogra and Rockdale and Hurstville and the four or five surrounding suburbs. And I also want to check in when I take my photo, even if I'm not at somewhere fancy, even if I'm not at a fancy restaurant or a club or a cafe, if I'm simply at my local suburb, Brighton, I want to check in there. Reason being, because let's just say, for example, if someone is just new to the area, they've just moved into Brighton, they might be like, you know what, let me check out what's going on in the Brighton area. They'll go on Instagram, where are the cool cafes, where are the cool club? Oh, hold on, there's a boot camp here, what's that? But the only way they're going to find me is if I've used those hashtags and checked in. So that's one side of it there. But then it also goes on the other side. So if you're a trainer and you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I just don't know what to post every day, but I know Instagram's important, you might just spend five, 10 minutes a day and see who's checked in at your local suburb. You see someone's checked in at Brighton, okay. Or you see they've used it as a hashtag, cool. You might like their photo. You might leave a comment. You might follow them because you know they're your ideal client, right? If anyone's checking in in that area, that's your ideal client. And you want to be known as the expert in that local area, sort of like what Danny is, right? So that's a twofold thing. If you're taking that photo, make sure that you check in and use those local hashtags. But also if you don't have the time to, or you don't know what to post, you can also use that on that side of it as well. So I like that. Uh, In terms of the challenges, one I found worked really, really well and is really, really simple is the planking challenge. So you could do this to anyone really, but especially in your local boot camp, you could be like, all right, hey guys, here's the challenge for this week. It's a planking challenge. Every day this week, I want you to take a photo of you doing some sort of plank. It can be a funny plank. It can be a partner plank. It can be a serious plank. Just take one photo of you doing a plank. Make sure you use this hashtag here and make sure you tag me, John O'Petri Hillis in the photo. Every day, I'm going to pick one of you as the winner and I'm going to repost it on my Instagram, right? It's a bit of fun. You can add a prize well, but even if you don't, even if it's just, hey, I'm going to do it. The advantage to that there is you've got your whole crew taking a photo of them and tagging you. So they take the photo, all their audience sees that photo, all their audience sees that they've tagged you. They can then go back and and see you from there. So that's a, a, a good one to do with the challenge there. In terms of Danny, then yeah, same sort of thing, just in terms of interacting with other accounts. So I think that's the the part to Instagram that a lot of people that are just starting off don't focus a lot on. They're just like, okay, I better post, I better post, I better post. But what's important, just as important as posting is interacting with other accounts. And also to piggyback on Danny is the description. This is the other thing I see with a lot of trainers. They might post a photo and the photo might be all right, but then there's no description. And it's like, well, what is this? Is this do you run a boot camp? Is this just a fun thing? Is this a two on one? Like if I want more info, where do I go? Like there's just nothing there. So that's another important part on Instagram. Like you take that photo there, make sure you have some sort of a description there telling a story. The way it usually works on Instagram are people are going to look at the photo first, right? They're not going to read the description first. The, The goal of Instagram is catch their attention with that photo Once they've seen that a photo, that's when you've got that attention and that's when you can write more in the description down there. So step one, if you're listening to this, step one is take that riveting photo, but don't forget about the description as well. Have some sort of a description there that's telling people what it is. What I've started to do is put it all in one. So if I post a video up there, 
on that actual video, I'll have a, a title up the top saying what it is and maybe a call to action down the bottom saying what it is as well. And then just one tip I've found with the bio. So bio, very important as well because what a lot of people do on Instagram is, especially if you're doing the interacting with other people stuff, say you're interacting with them, you're liking them, you're following them, they're going to check you out, right? You want two things. You want your bio to be optimized so they actually follow you back. But also what I want to do is I want to capture that lead because what I find on Instagram or on any social media platform, they might follow you for a couple of days. They might be engaged for a couple of weeks, but then, you know, they stop liking a few of your photos and then all of a sudden they never see you again because the algorithm works against you, right? So if there's other ways you can capture them, it just increases your chances. So I like to have, you can have a link to your website. What I think is better is having a link to an opt-in. So it might be like, um, you know, hey, I'm Jono from Outdoor Bootcamp. I run female boot camps, 12-week challenges. Click below for a free copy of my seven-day home program. Click below to get a seven-day free pass. Click below to get my clean eating recipe ebook. Some sort of thing there where if someone clicks there, they enter their name, number, and email, and they get the freebie. But it also gives you those contact details there. So if you want, you can give them a call. Hey, Jonathan, it's Jono from Outdoor Bootcamp. I see you got my free seven-day trial. Just wanted to give you a call and see if there's anything I can do to help you out. Okay, that's one, one way you can do it there. Or the other way, if you are bigger on Facebook, say I've got a very big Facebook group, right? Fitness Education Online, and that's where I spend most of my time. So what's also an advantage for me is to getting these people from Instagram into that Facebook group. So I could simply have a, a link to my Facebook group down there I find both of those strategies work better than a website because what can happen with a website is they click there, they look around, but then they're gone and there's, there's nothing else, right? Um, right? And also, I was going to go one further with that too. Or if you do send them to the website, still mention there's a freebie on there, okay? And same thing with the Facebook group because these days people are just flooded with click here, click there. Hardly anyone clicks anywhere unless they're going to get something for free, right? So even if you're just sending them to the website, even if you just say there's something free on there, Hey, by the way, you know, get a free, because most people have some sort of a freebie on their website anyway, even if it's just to subscribe to my newsletter, just mention having that freebie there just gives people more of a reason to click. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, just some summaries on Instagram there. We're a bit short on time, guys, so let's, um, let's finish that up. Danny, anything to finish with? Um, no, have fun with Instagram, guys. Get, you know, excited about it and, um, yeah, if you have any questions, just reach out and follow me on Instagram, Axfit. <laughs> Jonathan, anything to finish up with? Really quick, just want to thank you guys. Uh, I taught some, I learned some, and if I were going to take some things away, I would try to dedicate five minutes a day to make sure that I check my area, that I tag my area, that I have people at me when they post. I give them a reason to at me. I use my notes when I put my descriptions together. And um, don't be afraid to boost posts. Listen, watch this video twice over because there's so much information. You like, this is the holy grail of Instagram. <laughs> I can't wait to post this. And uh, I just want to add one more thing as well, actually, that I found has helped my Instagram uh, lately. Also have fun with it, right? What I find is if you're, if you're just using it solely as a business thing because you have to, you're going to struggle, right? If it's going to be like, oh, I have to post this to grow my business, you're going to struggle. What I recommend is even, even if you're new to Instagram, even probably more important than posting and probably even more important than, than going on other accounts and that, is even just spend five minutes a day on there having fun, right? Seeing what attracts you. Follow other people that you like. See what it, because that's what I learned a lot. Once I started to spend more time on there just purely from a fun side of things, seeing what other people are posting, I can be like, oh, that's really cool. Hey, I'm going to share something similar, but for my audience. Oh, that's really cool. I'm going to do that. So I think that's another important thing as well. If you listen to this new to Instagram, just muck around on there. You know, find some people that you like following, see what they're doing well, interact with them, see what they do back, and that'll help with your Instagram. But anyways, that's all we got time for. Let's just do a, a quick uh, recap of your Instagrams. Where do we find you on Instagram, Danny? Uh, Axfit, A-X-F-I-T. Jonathan, best Instagram for you? BFF Bootcamp. Boyfriend Frank, if you can't spell boot camp, well, then you're really screwed. <laughs> Probably listening to the wrong podcast if that's, if that's them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and myself, uh, you can find me, Jono underscore Petro Hillos. I'm not going to spell that or just fitness education online. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, guys. We'll chat. Um, I'm off to New Zealand and Tahiti next week, so I'll, I'll chat to you guys in a couple of weeks. All right, take care everyone. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. Actually, I know you found this video helpful because this was loaded with tons of information that you may not have known about Instagram, and I'm sure that if you start to implement this into your fitness business, you'll be more successful. But what if you don't have a fitness business? What if you're operating under the command of somebody that doesn't really want you to succeed? I always recommend that if you wanna take control, like Danny did, like Jono did, like I have, of your life. You're going to have to break out on your own. You're going to have to start your own fitness business and you can do this. You are capable. Really all you need are the organizational tools and I provide that with my Dumbbells to Dollars course. So there are three pillars to success in taking control of your life in the fitness industry and that is learning training methodologies, marketing, and management. And the Dumbbells to Dollars course does all of that and more to make sure that you see success as a personal trainer whether you're doing one-on-one -on -one or group training. So if you've never gotten the Dumbbells to Dollars course, you need that course and it's going to be more helpful for you, I guarantee, than any certification that you've gotten. All you got to do is go to www.dumbbellstodollars.com. You can check out the information on the course and I guarantee it's going to be the best purchase that you have ever made for your career. But that's about it. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below because your questions are what fuel this channel and maybe the topic of the next video. But I have uploaded a ton of videos in the last couple days, so you may not see me for about a week, but I'll be back as long as you remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe, stress loves all, get rest, don't slap anybody, love your clients, they'll love you back. I'll see y'all tomorrow or the next day and you have a good one.